Hi, my name is uh, Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Pharma Insights. Uh, we're here at the Biotech Showcase uh, in San Francisco. It runs alongside the JP Morgan uh, meeting where essentially the the movers and shakers of the pharmaceutical and biotech industry meet on an annual basis uh, early in January, you know, looking to do deals, etc. Um, I've been joined by uh, Yuval Cohen, who's the uh, CEO of Corbus Pharmaceuticals. And, uh, well, Corbus, is, you're a two year old company, you're publicly listed, you've got three phase two assets. How, how did that happen? That's pretty, pretty quick going. So at Corbis, we are two years old. There's 13 of us. We started with just three people. Um, and our business model is a, um, a simple but very efficient one. We identify assets that we want to bring in. These are typically assets that have some sort of proof of concept, hopefully some sort of a human data involved. Our first asset is our lead drug Resunab. We identified it, uh, acquired it, formed the company around it, and it came to us with a complete package of preclinical data, and phase one data on over 120 healthy volunteers. And that's so, for cystic fibrosis. And so that one we're developing for three separate ah. rare inflammatory diseases. The first one is cystic fibrosis, a disease that many of us are aware of. It's a childhood genetic disease. Sadly, it is a life-threatening uh, terminal disease. And then the other two are rare autoimmune diseases. The one is known as uh, systemic sclerosis or scleroderma. And the second one is known as dermatomyositis. Together they affect about 100,000 Americans. Uh, these are very serious diseases. The morbidity is very, very uh, serious uh, and they can be life-threatening. In all three of these diseases, we have the immune system that is involved, that is effectively out of control, damaging the body. And in all three of them, we have no um, appropriate or effective uh, therapies that target that chronic inflammation. Cystic fibrosis is a variety of other medications that have been approved for inflammation, sorry, for infection, for the CFDR defect, but nothing really for inflammation. The other two diseases, the autoimmune diseases, have no drugs approved for them at all. So in all three, there's definitely is a very high unmet need. And, and the compounds, are, the, are they disease modifying or is it just, they just teach treating the symptoms? So it's really both if you think about it. The problem in these diseases in terms of what progresses the morbidity, i.e. the symptoms, and certainly what causes the mortality is really inflammation. If you can modify the immune response to that, this sort of out of control chronic innate immunity, you have modified the disease. And they focus on a very unusual, in fact, first in class mechanism of action. So we're excited about that. So can you describe what that mechanism of action is? Certainly. In uh, the healthy individual, we have the ability to activate our immune system to protect ourselves in case of infection. And then we do something very mundane. We actually turn it back off, back to normal. If you have a chronic inflammatory disease, that off switch simply does not function. Right. That off switch involves a receptor called the CB2. Our compound is a CB2 agonist. It binds to CB2 very well in a right. very, very specific manner. And so what we do in a sense, Mike, is we fool the body into thinking it just got the off switch. Right. It seems to be very uh, promising. We certainly have potent preclinical data, uh, as well as some human pilot data mechanistically, but that's also coupled with extensive preclinical and clinical safety, and that's really the key. You're talking about therapies which are lifelong. Right. So, so you spot these assets, mm -hmm. um, and you said there was already a sort of phase one uh, uh, safety package uh, there. Were you looking for that particular type of, of, of product because of expertise you already had in this space? So all the team members share a um, experience in these uh, types of diseases and inflammation. Um, in fact, we've done even more than that, Mike, uh, since we've been our inception. Uh, in two of our diseases, cystic fibrosis and scleroderma, we've also gotten um, a fast track designation a status and orphan designation. So we've managed to do that very, very quickly and we're looking forward this year, one of our big milestones will be orphan designation for them in Europe. So we're excited about that. And of course, as we move forward, we'll continue hopefully to obtain those types of um, regulatory advantages. Okay, so you identified the assets, then you, you went out, raised money. Correct to acquire those assets? So in fact, the assets were in-house already. We initially acquired them with stock. We then raised money around that. Right. This is our initial pipeline. Um, we have done so very successfully. We've become a NASDAQ listed company. Um, and at that time, you didn't raise money when you went on NASDAQ? 
That was pre, correct. So we actually financed the company, this is unusual, as a private company. And the way we became NASDAQ listed is, um, is less uh, common. Uh, we didn't do an IPO, nor did we reverse into a shell. We actually did a self-registration. Right. Uh, and we did that very, very quickly. Our inception was in April of 2014. Um, 11 months later, we became a NASDAQ listed company. Right, right. Can you say how much money you raised initially? Certainly. So in total, we've raised $22 million. Uh, we're also particularly proud that we are the um, recipients of a $5 million award from the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Uh, and our dermatomyositis program is actually funded with a uh, grant from the NIH. Right. And the, uh, from, the, uh, from the charity, does the, are there any sort of you know, uh, stock issues uh, related to that or? So the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is a $4 billion patient advocacy group. Yeah. Um, the developmental award which we received is not a gift. It actually does come with a, uh, a payback. Uh, think of it as a sort of a long-term strategic soft loan. Um, you only need to, or we will be paying back this uh, multiple uh, but that only kicks in once the drug has been approved and sales commence. Okay. And so it's very, very equitable to both parties. So how, how important has the links between clearly these, sort of these non-profit organizations or patient advocacy groups? How, how important is that to, to your business model? Invaluable. In fact, they're absolutely essential. And I would argue they're essential for any other company in our field. Right. You have to talk to the patients. You have to talk to their patient advocacy groups. Remember, we're dealing with not that many patients. There are only 30,000 CF patients in the U.S. They belong to a registry. They're dealt with through very specific clinical sites. The foundation is our liaison. In fact, is the organizer for many of those relationships. Okay. It's invaluable. So your phase two... Uh, in the, the, the three areas. Correct. So, 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 so when can we start getting readouts for this? So 2016 is a big year for Corbis uh, in terms of our lead drug Resunab. Uh, our cystic fibrosis and scleroderma studies both wrap up at the end of 2016. And one quarter later, we will have our dermatomyositis data. So this is a very big year for us. Okay, and then the plan would be what? Because these are orphan diseases. Correct. Are you able to move and actually develop yeah, like Alexion, so we commercialize yourselves. So that's certainly an option, and in fact, that's our default. Um, you're talking about diseases, Mike, where typically patients are dealt with in a very select number of um, academic centers. Um, for example, for cystic fibrosis, you're probably looking at a sales force to cover the continental USA of about 30 to 40 individuals, um, and especially again working beside the foundations and these advocacy groups, that makes the job of reaching out to patients that much more effective and that much easier. Right, so the 22 million that you raised, mm -hmm. how far is that gonna allow you to sort of develop? You know? So as we've disclosed, that gets us to uh, the data in our two main indications. Right. Uh, so that's, that's a very, very important milestone. Of course, again, we are a public company. Um, the um, the advantage that that gives us, of course, is access to the markets. Yeah, and are you looking to, or have you actually raised money from from from, from your investors? So from our investors, we have raised money. What we've not done is raised money from the markets yet, right. and we're certainly. Um, looking at the right opportunity. I don't think now is the right opportunity, right. given what's happening on the markets. And also, frankly, given the fact that we're under no pressure. Well, we're very well capitalized. Uh, we feel no pressure to do so. So, but as a public company, did you get your investors to put, pump a bit more money into the, into the company? Certainly. So, in fact, the 22 million that we raised Inclusive. was correct. All oh, right, okay. So, at what point do you think you might need to, to go back to the market then? You know, Again, after phase two? Certainly that sometime, uh, you know, either prior or um, during the uh, data coming in will make a lot of sense. Uh, but again, we're all it's, it's all about looking at the right opportunity. If we do see a shift in the market, if we do see a shift in uh, our dynamics, uh, it makes a lot of sense. And on the commercialization, the, the, sort of the, the, the sort of clinicians who will be treating these patients, mm -hmm. are, they, are they discreet or would, you, would, would your salespeople be able, if you had salespeople, would they be able to go into the same clinics and, s and see the same clinicians who would be treating the three different types of patients? So each one is different. Well, cystic fibrosis are dealt with through specialized pulmonologists. The other two, again, are specialized rheumatologists. Yeah. 
sometimes specialized dermatologists. Yeah. Um, there are not that many of them. Again, these are highly, highly complex diseases. They're seen by relatively few specialists. Okay. And yeah, going forward, do you anticipate bringing in other assets that were similar to these ones that build on those franchises, or would they be just other orphan disease type um, uh, compounds? We're certainly looking forward to expanding our pipeline. Right. Uh, we like the areas that we're in. Right. Uh, the, um, the good news or maybe bad news is that there are many of these diseases out there, again, which are relatively uncommon, very high unmet need, and where little or anything is approved. So our expertise really is the team that we have and our ability to target in on an asset, bring it in, translate it into the clinic, and then take it all the way. So in San Francisco, you and your team, what, what, what are you hoping to achieve? So it's all about uh, reaching out uh, and maintaining our relationships with a member of audiences. One of those, of course, uh, very important are the pharma companies. Uh, another type of audience are institutional investors. Uh, some of them are buying our stock on the open market. Some of them are interested in other types of dynamics. Uh, and of course, talking to um, other types of audiences. Media, of course, there are a number of analysts that we talk to, uh, and that's very important to us. Right. Well, Yuval, thanks very much for popping by and, and, and chatting to us and telling us the Corva story. Really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Take care.